What's up guys, it's Leet Coder. This is Leet Code 70, Climbing Stairs. In this problem, we're climbing stairs and we're given the input of how many steps it takes to reach the top. For example, one, two, or three here. And we have to figure out how many distinct ways we can climb to the top. And we can only climb in either one or two steps at a time. For one step, obviously, the only way to get there is with one step. For two steps, we can get there with one and one or two. And for three steps, we can get there with one, one, and one or two and one or one and two. Now this kind of lends itself well for a recursive algorithm. So if we have our input as three, we know three is equal to our function of two and our function of one, right? And that's going to be equal to two plus one, which equals three. Now doing this recursively works. However, it can get to be really slow, right? Because if you're at 100, 100 is equal to the function at 99 plus f at 98. And this is equal to f at 98 plus f at 97. And this is equal to f at 96 plus 97. So you can see there's a lot of recomputation of values that we've already seen. And this is the key here. Because we've already calculated some of these values, we want to actually store them in some data structure and then use them going forward. So instead of doing this recursively, let's think of this iteratively. Let's start from one, right? We know f of one is equal to just one. That's a given. And we know f of two is equal to two. Okay, now what if we have our function at three? Well, we know this is equal to f at one plus f at two. And what we can do here is we can actually just use the values that we stored here. So instead of having a recursive call, we can just have a variable called steps, and it could be an array. And each position in the array represents the step, and each value at each position represents the amount of distinct way you can reach the top. So initially it would be one and two. And when we get to this three, instead of doing the function call recursively here, all we have to do is check this array here at those indices. So really this is equal to steps at zero plus steps at one. And what we can do is we can keep going forward and forward and forward. So we do f of four, f of five, f of six, et cetera, and keep adding to this array and using the previous value that we saw. And this way we avoid having to do any recalculation. This is O of N because we're just going to be doing some operation N times. And in terms of space complexity, it is O of N if we start in an array. In this case, we can actually get clever and just have two variables, one for the previous step, and one for the two previous steps, and that way we get to O of one. I think it's easier to read if we just use an array for the space, however. So I'm just going to keep it at O of N. And now before we get to the code, if you found this helpful so far, please give a like and a subscribe because it really helps the YouTube algorithm. And with that said, let's get to the code. Okay, let's first do the recursive solution. So let's do our base cases first. If n is equal to zero, we return zero. Else, if n is equal to one, we return one. Else, if n equals two, we return two. Now we can do the recursive portion. So this would be return self climb stairs at n minus one plus self climb stairs at n minus two. And we can see that this works. However, for a large input, it's going to be very slow. So let's use some dynamic programming. Let's store the previous values that we've seen into a data structure and use that data structure going forward to make this faster. So we'll have a variable here called steps. The zeroth index here represents the number of distinct ways we can reach one step. And this is for two steps. So now what we do is we say for i in range, starting from two, which is the index of three, all the way up until n, all we want to do is say steps dot append. So we're just adding a new value to the array and it's going to be steps at I minus one plus steps at I minus two. And then at the end, all we do is we return steps at N minus one and boom, that's it. So we can see that this time limit exceeded submission that I did earlier was actually when I used the recursive method. And it, of course, for a very large input, it timed out. And we can see that we have a very fast algorithm here. 
And we're using a little bit more memory than most people. And this is because I'm actually storing an array instead of just storing two variables. Personally, I think this is actually nicer and it's easier to understand what's going on here. But of course, if you need to optimize it further, you can actually make this into two variables. Remember for dynamic programming, all you have to do is store the previous value that you've seen into some data structure and reuse it. That is the main idea. And if you found this video helpful, please give a like and subscribe because it really helps the YouTube algorithm and comment down below with any other problem you'd like to see next. Till next time.